The uh, topic for today is this ASUS router. Now, this is not the latest router from ASUS. It's been out for some time now. But what makes it so cool is if you're like me and you need a lot of networking ports, don't mind me as I walk up to the camera here. Check this out. Eight gigabit networking ports on the back. So you're going to plug your cable modem in there. You've got the USB port to share a printer or a USB drive. So everybody on your network can use what's plugged in here. It's great for file sharing. It's great for streaming media to your smart TV. Uh, then of course, on the other side, we've got our recessed reset switch there in, where is it? Right there in red. Next to that is the WPS, the wireless protective service. That's just to push a button on each device to automatically configure it, which is should be disabled. Our power jack right over there and our on off switch. On the front of the router, do we have anything on the front? Yes. If we open up this little, well, let's see. First of all, we've got a button on the front that turns off the LEDs and a button that turns off the Wi-Fi. If you accidentally press that, you wonder where your Wi-Fi went. That often happens when people are cleaning or reorganizing things. When they pick up the router, if I can hold it steady, sometimes they grab it and they hit these buttons by mistake. So be aware that those buttons are there. Coming over to the other side, there's a little door here. I think there's a little door there. Yes, and there's another USB port. I have one of these little USB Seagate Elements or Western Digital Passport mechanical laptop drives. This one's two terabytes. They're like 50 or 60 bucks. I wouldn't buy one of these used. They're so cheap, just buy it new. It's just a standard USB. This is USB 3, and we can plug this in I can plug it into the back or I can use this USB 3 port right up here. I can open that little door and I can plug this in as you would any USB device. We'll likely see one of the lights up here. Yep, that USB port just lit up. Go back to my network here. Let's refresh it or just hit this here. Hit the down button here. Aha! Seagate. Now you can see it's asking for credentials. Now ASUS does this, turns on the need to have login credentials by default. Netgear and TP-Link do not do that. For the most part, you plug it in, you're good to go at least as far as local area network uh, reading and writing. ASUS turns the security on by default. So we're gonna have to turn that security off because if you're on my network in my house, I'm letting you have access to my drive because, uh, you know, now, now if you're on my guest network, then you will not have access to anything but the internet. That's just the way guest networks are supposed to be. Some routers have an option that says network isolation for guest network. And that should be on by default. And that's what that means is network isolation means the person joining that particular network is isolated away from everything else. Open that, don't care about that. USB application. Oh, well this is Samba. That's pretty much what we want. That's what I want. Do I want to enable an iTunes server? I do not. Do I want to enable a UPnP media server? For me, I'd say no, I don't want to. Uh, I'm still not, oh, here we go. Enable share is turned on by default. Allow guest login is turned on on. That's all I really needed to do. You need to make sure it's on the work group name that your computers are on, which by default is work group. And we'll limit the number of concurrent users to five, just so it doesn't bog down too much. And it does show that's the drive we have plugged in. Hit apply. And now, as soon as it comes back from applying, there we go. If I go back to the network, I should see the the router, share right there, Seagate portable drive, double click, and look, there's all my files and folders on there. Anything I copy to here, I copy no differently uh, than I would to my C drive or any other attached USB drive. If I want to, I can map this drive. Mapping it means instead of searching for it every time, I could take this name like RTAX88U. That's kind of a long name to have to type in for the network share. 
uh, I could change that and call it server. That's here in the router. It's just giving the router a name, which should be right in the basic settings here for the LAN. Yeah. So say, for example, I can call this server, just like that, hit apply. Now, sometimes when you do this, you may have to restart your computer to log into the network, which happens during the Windows startup process, whether you have a, a local uh, password or not, even if it's just booting right to the desktop, you may want to restart your computer if you're having trouble seeing the router. So with that being done, let me close out and let's look for it again. Because remember now the router's name has changed. So I see server here now. If I hit the down button, there's Seagate Portable. There it is. Now, if I want to make this a permanent drive letter, I can do that. If I click on this PC, I always add the, the, the this PC icon to the desktop. You can easily do that by right clicking and going to display settings. Oh, sorry, go to personalize. We go to personalize, go over here to themes. Where's my themes? Right here. This is themes. And under themes, look for desktop icon settings. And then if I want this PC, I can add it. If I want to add the user folder or the network icon, um, I can change the recycle bin picture, what it looks like full or empty. That's all done right in here. I can even add a shortcut to the control panel. Now, it's better to have the My Computer icon on the desktop than simply dragging it as a shortcut because then I can right click on the My Computer icon or this computer and I can see the system specs. Whereas a shortcut, if I did it, will only give you the, the details of that particular shortcut. So anyway, I would click on this PC or I could bring up the yellow folder, either way. Up here at the top, I would go to Let's see where Windows 11 has moved it. Right there under the three dots, map and network drive. I'm gonna give it the furthest drive letter away, so I don't want drive letters to conflict as I plug USB devices into computers. They're gonna get the next available drive letter, so drive D or drive E or drive F or drive G. So since this is a mapped network drive, I wanna put it all the way at the end of the alphabet, X, Y, Z, whatever. And I want to do it the same to every computer that I do this to. So there's consistency and it doesn't confuse uh, people using those computers. I'm going to hit browse. I'm going to look for the router, which I named server. I'm going to look for the Seagate portable drive and click OK and click make sure reconnect at login or sign in is checked and hit finish and it opens it to show us that it's working. So now when I look at my PC or this PC, I have two drive letters. You see, I have drive C and I have drive Z. I open it up and I can easily copy files. I can drop and drag like that and it just copies it over. It's super easy. And now everybody on the network can share these files.